How many of you guys have tried to record somebody who sings and plays guitar at the same time? Is that a wonderful thing to do? All right, so Meredith is about to change your life in a good way, in a good way. <laughs> so we have developed, a, at Flux, we have developed a, um, a, a, an interesting trick on how to have the same human being, um, human being, right? Yeah. Um, both play and sing at the same time. This is Will Knox, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. We're using two Royer ribbon microphones. The thing about ribbons is that they're, they're mellow sounding, which is great, okay? Especially if you're working with a digital system where everything is pretty much a mirror of what you put in. You get no help from a tape machine. You don't get no softening of anything. It's a mirror. So it's nice to have a microphone that's, that sounds smooth and mellow and even because most people tend to pick a large diaphragm condenser and shove it onto the singer. The problem is that that was designed to go through eight rows of transformers plus a piece of tape. Now you're going through a DC coupled converter that does nothing for you and everything turns out so bright that your teeth hurt every time the singer sings the chorus, right? Okay. So that's why we've switched to using uh, Royers on vocals as much as we can depending on the singer. And this particular singer <laughs> who's here, uh, it sounds pretty darn good. So on the vocal we have the new Royer 101 and on the guitar we have the SF2. The thing about ribbon, besides the fact that they sound smooth and they're even, and it's not as bright as old condensers, is they are figure eight. You know what a figure eight is? All right, so if you have the microphone like this, it picks up both the front and the back. And it has a wonderful thing, is here on the side, it has amazing rejection, borderline to nothing. So if you have a ribbon microphone, you go blah, 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 you hear blah, blah, blah. If you go blah, 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 you hear Using that, um, so if you imagine, if you see here, you have the front of the mic and the back of the mic, and this is the rejection. Now, if you're smart enough to use this microphone so that this part picks up his vocal and this part rejects the guitars, you're not going to get a lot of guitar in the vocal mic. And, and if you use the, the guitar microphone and you do the, the same trick, when you put the rejection Era, area of the ribbon towards the vocal, you ain't gonna get a lot of vocal in the guitar mic. Is that possible? Absolutely. Demonstration. Can you just do the first verse? I'm solid steel in scolding steam I'm a cog in the machine I'm sick and tired of the same routine And I'm sinking like a submarine Wonderful. So let's listen to that. You know right away it sounds good, right? You play it and you're like, oh, nice. Okay. Now, there's a few things. Let's listen to just the vocal. Mm -hmm. I'm solid steel Rockin', right? Scolding steam, I'm a cog in the machine. Okay, you see the separation? You want to hear that again? Let's, let's play that again. I'm solid steel in scolding steam. It's pretty crazy. I'm a cog in the machine. All right, can we hear the guitar mic just for entertainment's sake? See what I mean? Buy yourself some ribbons. It works. I can make a record out of this, no problem. Okay, so if we switch back to the vocal, here's one of the things that might happen. If you have a slightly insecure singer, no, <laughs> not this one. This one rules the world, but if you have a slightly insecure singer, all 99% of them, uh, They'll say, oh, but it sounds muffled. No, no, it doesn't sound muffled. It sounds right. But they are singers, so you got to deal with them. Um, so <laughs> I'm talking about the ones who don't write their own songs. <sighs> um, so 
And, it, and a ribbon is a darker microphone. That's the whole point, OK? But it's nice to add a little bit of a <laughs> thing in the high end uh, to make it shine a little bit. It's going to have two things. First, you'll work less hard at the mix, and B, you'll shut the singer up, which is a fun, wonderful thing. So what we have done here is we inserted a uh, dangerous back EQ, which is their new EQ that just came out, in line. And we're going to EQ up. Um, we're going to put it after the preamp, before the converter, right? So microphone, preamp, EQ, into the converter. This is to show you that if you don't get exactly the tone you want, you know it's good. You know the microphone is the right microphone. You can tell. But you know it needs a little bit of je ne sais quoi, ha, ha, ha. Then, you can insert some processing to make it sound cool. So in this particular case, we're going to use the back CQ because it's so smooth. And it's, it's really, really gentle, and it sounds great. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm adding, a th uh, I'm high-passing the bottom to remove the rumble, adding a couple dBs at 166. And um, I am adding like 2 dBs at 4.8K shelf. And let's do another quick recording of that. Same part, please. I'm solid steel in scalding steam. I'm a cog in the machine. I'm sick and tired of the same routine, and I'm sinking like a submarine. Okay, let's listen to that. I'm solid steel in scalding steam. I'm a cog in the machine. Would you be kind enough to compare with the previous one? I'm solid steel. Sounds great, but it's a little dark. In scalding steam. I'm a cog in the machine. New one with EQ. I'm solid steel. In scalding Just steam, a bit I'm a cog <laughs> in the machine. Okay, so you see what it did, right? Okay. Now, if you hear again, can you play that again? I'm gonna. Uh, no, I'm I'm in mayor. Sorry. <laughs> I'm solid steel. In scalding steam, I'm a cog okay. in the. Listen, I'm gonna we're gonna play it again. Listen to solid steel. I'm a cog. So solid steel, I am a cog. Listen to those two transients and listen to the energy in those two words. Let's play it again. I'm solid steel in scalding steam. I'm a cog in the machine. Do you hear these little peaks coming out? Okay. So why not we're using the UA um, LA610 Mark II, which is a 2610 preamp, so a 2 preamp like a, a traditional 610 preamp, and it has an LA2 compressor in it. And that's we tend to love that on vocal. In this particular case, with this particular microphone, in this particular environment, with what we'll have for breakfast this morning, um, there's that little peak going on. right? Now, I know in my heart that the microphone's good, but I'm not happy with that peak because I know it's going to kick my butt tomorrow when I mix it. So why don't we see what happens if we switch preamps? to see if we can get a better tone from the same setup. So we're going to switch preamps. 710? Uh, the f yeah, this, the 4710 is what we have left. So 4710 number 4, which would be line f 13. And let's see what that does. When you're stuck, over time you'll learn that, ah, this is, this is that problem. Mm, this is this problem. So right now we're going to switch between the two UA um, uh, preamps. Maybe we'll... Uh, because he had the breakfast for the Hampton Inn this morning, maybe he cannot use a two preamp. You don't know. So maybe he needs a good solid state preamp with an open sound. So um, that was fantastic. You should do it again. Okay. I'm solid steel. In scalding steam, I'm a cog in the machine. I'm sick and tired of the same routine, and I'm sinking like a submarine. I'd like to point out the insane consistency of this human being right here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
What you don't know is this is all this cam is lip syncing to the same recording and <laughs> playing. <laughs> all right, so this is with, so we started with the LA610 preamp and the LA2 star compression, a little bit of compression, maybe a couple dBs. Now we're switching to the new 4710 preamp with a little bit of 1176, 1176 star compression. The setting I'm on right now, are we on this fast? Are we on the fast? So we're catching the transit. Let's see how that sounds. I'm solid steel. Aha. In scolding steam, I'm a cog in the machine. Same vibe, but without the peaks. I'm sick and tired of the same routine, and I'm Can sinking you play the, um, like. Play the second at A610. Thank you. I'm solid steel. See? In scolding steam. It's a little smothered. I'm a cog in the machine. 4710. I'm solid steel. Opens up. In scolding steam. I'm a cog in the machine. I put my money on this one. So it's subtle. You may have to close your eyes to hear it. But the reality is that's the difference between you know, something that sounds a little like pressure cooked, like a little smothered, and something that just sounds open. You have to try different things. Those little differences are the differences between a demo and a record. Okay, you guys heard the thing. Would you like to hear the difference again? Who would like to hear the difference again? You cool? You all? Okay, let's do that again. Let's play the LA610, the first two phrases, and then the 4710, first two phrases. I won't speak in the middle so you can memorize the sound. I'm solid steel. In scolding steam, I'm a cog in the machine. I'm solid steel. In scolding steam, I'm a cog in the machine. It's pretty, you guys heard it, right? So now, uh, let's talk about that. You know I hate DIs. Why are you using the DI? Because, as we know, after working What do you mean, as times, we know? I do not know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've worked with this singer, Will, before, and, uh, and he plucks very lightly. So sometimes the guitar to vocal ratio when we come to mix it, as you know, oh, um, it's fighting. So um, there is a little bit of you know, vocal in the guitar mic and vice versa. So you bring up the guitar to get more guitar and you get more vocal. Um, so we take a DI. I always take a DI um, of a guitar, uh, never of a bass. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we need it just for slight reinforcement, just you know, when, when we come to mixing to be able to boost the guitar on the quieter parts and not get more vocal. Yeah, it's a, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And for the DI, we use the, uh, the built-in high-Z input on the, one of the 4710 yeah. channels. And uh, I always complain uh, about the fact that uh, the DI sounds like crap and that Meredith records the DI and I always use it in the mix. Exactly. <laughs> So could we hear the sound of the DI uh, on, on one of the existing recordings? Oh, uh, yeah. Let's see. Standard DI. Well, it's not as horrible as some. But, um, <laughs> so can we, hear the, uh, <laughs> can we hear the DI and the microphone together, yeah. please? See that air? Only a microphone can give you that. Cool. And can I hear the, the just the microphone? Mm-hmm. Okay. I will try really hard to not use a DI tomorrow. <coughs> okay. And I probably will fail. Bucks does you do it? Um, all right. Cool. Questions on this? Yes. So why wouldn't you go ahead and record the guitar first and then the vocal afterwards? Very good production question. Why would you not do that? Because all the love is gone if you do that. <laughs> no, no, I'm dead serious. All the love, all the music goes away. Yeah. We've tried it with Will, who's a phenomenal guitar player, and as you may have noticed, a phenomenal singer. So you'd think with that kind of skill set, we could do that. Every time we try to record the stuff different, uh, separately, because I'm a stickler for hi-fi, and some of the songs where he strums, it's more difficult. And every time, we just don't like the way it sounds. We just don't like the way it sounds, because the life is gone. You know the difference between 
I'm going to see, you know, you go to see a really great band live, right? And you're like, wow, man, that's awesome. You go and you actually buy the CD if they don't give it to you for free. <laughs> and you go home and you put it on and it sucks. How many times did that happen? Every time, right? That's because somebody came in and said, okay, go record your guitar part. And now go record your vocal. That's not how that music is made. That's not music. That's puzzle. It's a different thing. I am enduring the rent of a New York City studio in Manhattan for one reason, so that we can track live band all together, make music all together. Enough with the piecemeal stuff. It's horrible. It's good enough for Britney and Gaga. And for everybody who makes music, make music, right? <laughs> so that, that would be why. Um, I feel very strongly about that. Could you tell? Um, so now I would like to, uh, to uh, is there any um, violin player uh, from Indiana with a dry sense of humor in the room? <laughs>